interesting vessel. This red one that's with Nantucket along its hull is called LV-112, or Light Vessel 112. It's one of three Nantucket light ships which were floating lighthouses, which used to be stationed off the coast of the island of Nantucket to guide other ships around the dangerous shallow water shoals that surround the island for 40 miles. Now these sailors who worked on board these boats worked for three weeks at a time and in all this free time that they ended up with on this boat going nowhere, 40 miles away from anywhere, they picked up a very interesting hobby and that hobby was basket weaving. They started weaving little baskets today called Nantucket Lightship Baskets, very highly sought after by collectors today. In fact, just a few months ago, an original Nantucket Lightship Basket sold at auction for $35,000. Very old abandoned piers. Now these piers are not to be confused with wharves. The main difference between these is that piers like this one with the danger no trespassing signs on it and the one to its left. Piers like these two are built on wooden pilings with platforms then constructed on top. Whereas wharves, like the one like a long wharf which we left on the other side of the harbor, are built on granite blocks. The piers built on wood, wharves built on granite or stone. Again, these piers are entirely abandoned. Once bustling with activity, they now stand as a sort of testament to the decline in America's shipping industry. Today, Boston's number one import is foreign oil. It's number one export, scrap steel. And the city of Boston is simply allowing the piers to collapse down into the water. As this is just cheaper than hiring a crew to come in and take them down. Or give them those things. But they collapse underneath the waters of the harbor, and all the rubble can be safely, but yes, of course, more importantly, cheaply towed away. Condos at Clippership Wharf. Well, before there were these condos at Clippership Wharf, there were clipper ships at Clippership Wharf. And this is the former site of the shipyard of a man named Donald McKay. Donald McKay was a master shipbuilder known for building clipper ships. Now, these were the fastest ships on the sea, sometimes even called the Greyhounds of the sea, just because of how fast they were. Now, Donald McKay's most famous ship was a clipper ship called the Flying Cloud. Now the Flying Cloud was built in 1851, but in 1854, the Flying Cloud made a remarkable journey. On its maiden voyage, the Flying Cloud left New York, went down along the east coast of North America, and this was well before the Panama Canal was constructed. So it continued down along the east coast of South America, round the Horn of South America, and then worked its way back up the west coasts to San Francisco. So New York, all the way around, and down and back up to San Francisco and have made this voyage in a record setting 89 days and 8 hours.